Are you ready for the word for today? Oh, and a big congratulations, Pastor Cleo, who just got ordained. Very, very big congratulations. It's the first time I'm seeing you after the title. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. May God continue to give you grace and add more of his grace. We are so proud of you. We love you dearly into this house. Yeah, we, we believe that your contribution and your, um, um, yeah, your everything that God will enable you to add into this ministry, yeah, it will remain, yeah, to our children and our children's children, more strength over your life, in Jesus' name, amen. So are we ready for the, for the word for today? I think I've done all that I'm supposed to do. Minister, I'm good, Mosne. It's good. So now I can, I can shoot. All right. It's Mother's Day today. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are here in the house. Every mother who is here, happy, 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 and a blessed Mother's Day to all of you. Now let's go to the word for today. A word for mothers. A word for mothers. A word for Mother's Day. We are going to be talking today about different kinds of mothers that we're going to be looking into from the Word of God. So everybody is a mother today according to the Word of, of the day. Amen. Now, let's go. Let's open the book of Exodus 4, verses 24 to 26. Exodus 4 will touch a number of scriptures according to each um, element we're going to be looking into from each mother. But yeah, our foundational scripture, let's just touch on Exodus 4, verses 24 to 26, then we'll continue from there. Do I have somebody reading for me this morning or I'm reading for myself? And it came to pass on the way at the encampment. What version is this? New King James Version. Okay. Can I have the NIV, please? At a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. Let's continue. But Zipporah took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it, and said, Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. So the Lord let him alone, at that time she said, bridegroom of blood, referring of circumcision. And this is the word of the Lord, and the church say, Amen. This morning, we may be seated. This morning, I would like us just to go through scriptures and checking and seeing the kind of mothers we have from the word of God so that we can learn from them and we can take one or two things from the scriptures. We see here Moses is about to be killed by God because he didn't observe what the Lord, the standard that God has set and that he has given to them as Israel. So Moses is in trouble and his life is about to be taken away from him. But thank God for Zipporah because she had to come in and intervene the situation so that Moses' life can be spared. Are we together in this house? So that Moses' life will not be killed. Instead, for him to be saved as a result of his wife, the mother of the, his household, stepping in and intervening in the situation. Allow me this morning to speak to, 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 to let you know that the kind of mothers we have uh, also in our days today, we have mothers who are crisis managers. Mothers who know how to step in the most vulnerable situation and navigate the ship and put it into the right direction. We have mothers who know how to manage a crisis at the time where the heat 
is at its best, but they know how to put the fires down. We have mothers who know how to save lives, mothers who know how to intervene, mothers who know how to take a risk, mothers who know how to sacrifice for the sake of the lives of their children and the lives of their families. Moses would have died immediately because according to God's standards, God was not prepared to compromise at this level. But because of Zipporah coming in, God was, his anger was able to subside because Zipporah knew how to intervene. I pray for mothers this morning that in the midst of all the challenges you are going to face in your house or that you are facing in your house, that you will not lose your passion to save and to rescue your family. That in the midst of all the challenges that you have, that you will not lose the, 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 the distinction elements in your life as a mother that life will beat you so much that you will lose yourself in the process. But instead, I pray for you this morning that as a mother, you will always have a sting in everything that you do that you will be prepared in order to go an extra mile for the sake of your family, an extra mile for the sake of your children, an extra mile for the sake of the young ones that you are entrusted with, for the sake of the lives and the destiny of your children. For the sake of the lives of the destiny of our young people in our churches. For the sake of the lives of those that are in need. Those that are in crises. Those that are needing salvation. Those that are needing for God to circumcise them from the world. Until the character of Christ is born on the inside of them. Are we together this morning? I pray that God may give you the grace like he did to Zipporah. That God will give you the wisdom like he did to Zipporah. That God will give you instincts like he did with Zipporah. Now listen, Zipporah didn't know the conversation between God and Moses. She was not aware of the intimate discussion between Moses and God but she knew somehow that there is a standard that God has set that he wants every father in the house in order for them to meet and somehow her own husband had not met the requirements are we together in this house and she was willing to take a risk understand that when it comes to circumcision in Israel it was not a woman's job to do it. It was not a woman's responsibility to do it. In fact, it was more a risk for a woman to circumcise than anybody else to do the job. Are we together in this house? But she was willing to take the risk in order for her husband's life to be saved and to be stable. Are we together in this house? Am I talking to some people this morning? Help me to preach better, please. I've just came back, so I'm trying to find my way. Are we together in this house? <laughs> I'm coming from KZN. We have a different rhythm. Now I'm trying to adjust myself and come back home here. Here we also have a different rhythm. So help the preacher this morning to do a good job. <laughs> Amen. So it, but she was prepared to take a risk for the sake of her husband and for the sake of her household. Are we together in this house? Circumcision was a critical issue in Israel and it was not a woman's territory at all. But she was prepared to enter into that territory as long as at the end of the day, the intervention that she has done will be able to provide the salvation that was needed at the time. Are we together in this house? Sometimes as mothers, you are expected to take a risk and go an extra mile. I pray that after you have done so many sacrifices, because as mothers, we do a lot of sacrifices. As mothers, we bend our 
our back backwards for the sake of our families. As mothers, we have at times to put on a mask and pretend as if everything is going well. Knowing very well that you know what? My back has been whipped and I have no leg to stand on. But for the sake of the family, you cover up so that your family may survive. Are we together this morning? Sometimes we have to come up with plans and cover certain things and try to cover some realities and make sure that people don't see the things that you and your family you are going through and cover for the sake of your children so that they may find faith and not lose their confidence in who they are in who their fathers are in who their families are but as a mother you know how to cover certain things just so that the family may move forward am i talking to some mothers this morning am i in the right church this morning so zipporah is stepping in for this kind of a responsibility and she is saying i'm going to intervene i will take the risk if god do whatever that he wants to do with me i am ready for it it's fine it's okay i will take this one i will cover up certain things so that my family may move forward a mother number two that we're going to look into this morning her name is deborah let's go to the book of judges chapter four we will read verses six to seven judges four we will read verses six to seven a very very interesting part of this scripture here in deborah she sent for barak son of abinoam from Kadesh in Naphtal and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtal and Zebulon and lead them up to Mount Tabor. Let's continue. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. The second mother I want us to look at this morning is Deborah. Deborah here in this scripture, she is coming up as the kind of a mother or a woman who is boldly reminding Barak in his hesitant time that God's promise of blessing that was upon him will come as a result of his obedience. Are we together in this house? He is reminding Barak that, hey, Barak, there is a promise of God over your life. Do not allow to be hesitant at this time because there is a promise of God over your life and you can only take over the territories only by and through your obedience. Are we together in this house? Because it is only this kind of a mother who will be there to remind you of God's promises over your life. And at that time, you have totally forgotten. You are seeing that things are going haywire. Everything is going upside down. But this kind of a mother will rise up to remind you and say, Hey, don't forget that there is... God has put his name over your life. Do not forget that God has his promises over your life. Do not forget that there are prophecies over your life. Do not forget your identity of who you are in Christ Jesus. Do not look at this situation of where you are at this point in time. Look up your eyes to the hills from where your help comes from. It's a kind of a mother who is not prepared to compromise God's word over your life. No matter what happens and what you are going through. She is standing as a Deborah to remind you of God's promises over your life. She is standing as the mouth of God to remind you of God's promises and God's word over your life. She is not prepared to compromise what God has said in your life. No matter what you are going through, but she is there to remind you. 
If you have this kind of a woman as a husband, you are blessed. If you have this kind of a woman as a sister next to you, you are blessed. If you have this kind of a woman around you as a sister in the church or a prayer life, a prayer partner, you are blessed. She is there to remind you, you are who God says you are. You are not your condition. You are not your circumstance. You are not your situation. You are not your failure. But you are who God says you are. And guess what? I will not only just remind you, but I am prepared to go with you into the battle. I'm prepared to go with you into fasting. I'm prepared to go with you into this challenge. I am prepared to walk with you in the midst of this darkness until you see the light I'm going to stand by you Deborah says I will take up the troop and I will go up the mountain I will face the troop by myself and I will bring it back to you that's the kind of a mother that we need in 2024 a kind of a mother we need at CKLI a kind of a mother we need in this generation who are going to stand and say if God have said it oh my God if heaven has declared it if heaven has said it over your life if Jesus have sent his servant in order to speak over your life do not compromise it hold on hold on hold on hold on it might take some years it might take some months but hold on to God's word hold on to God's promises because God has put his name over your life this morning are we together in this house if you are with me this morning put your hands together and celebrate Jesus she's not prepared to compromise God's promises She's not prepared to compromise God's word of our love. She is not prepared. She is there to remind you that it is through obedience that you will come to a place of fulfillment. She does not say, hey, if things are like this, no, I understand. Really, no, I'm feeling you that, yeah, you have to lower some. Said, no, no, no. She is there standing and saying, this is what God wants. This is what God says. We will stick by it and we will walk in obedience. We will walk in God's faithfulness until we see the fulfillment of it. That's our Deborahs of our time. Are we together in this house? If we are with me, shout a big amen. amen. Number three, mother we have is, we find her in the book of Judges 13 verses 22 to 23. She is Manoah's wife. She is Manoah's wife. Judges 13. Let's read. This is Manoah speaking. We are doomed to die, he said to his wife. This is Manoah. We have seen God. He has just seen the angel and he is shocked. But listen to what the wife says. But his wife answered, if the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from our hands. Nor would have shown us all these things or now that he has told us this. Manoah, is that 23? Yeah? Manoah, Manoah is shocked. He is alarmed. He has just realized that the man that spoke to them and told them that they are going to have a child is actually not just a man. This was an angel. And he's coming back into the house. I mean, his face is showing. His everything is, is, is like gasping for air. He's coming in the house in, in, in serious alarm and serious shock. He is like, he cannot believe he has just seen the angel of the Lord. And, and he, he, he's all over. He's everywhere. But his wife is there to remind him and says to him, no, 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 no. You have to calm down. We have to calm down. Don't overreact. Don't be so fearful. Are we together in this house? God has visited you. Yes, I agree. But please remember, if God was going to kill you because we have just seen the angel and maybe you might not have acknowledged the encounter that you have, he would not have accepted the sacrifice. He would not have kept you. He would not have embraced what you have brought to him. Are we together in this house? 
Manoah's wife, this is the kind of a mother who is always there to calm you and give you an insight. She is always there to encourage you. She is always there to evoke greatness out of you. She is always there to stabilize you. Are we together in this house? Her job is to make sure that you don't overreact. Are we together in this house? She is there to make sure that you remain calm and stable. Even in the, your most fearful moments in your life. But she is there to stabilize you. Are we together in this house? I pray for you this morning. That God may give you this kind of women around your life. This kind of mothers around your life. That will be there in the midst of the fire. But they'll calm you. In the midst of the turbulence. But they can hold your hand and keep you sane. And make sure that you don't lose it. Are we together in this house? The kind of mothers who know how to keep you intact. Hey, you are coming from a crisis. You are thinking this is the end of me. This is it. There's no way I've, 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 I've reached a boundary. I cannot go beyond this. This is the end for me. And I don't see a way out. But they are there to just keep you calm. Keep you stable. Make sure that you are sane. Make sure that you can still see your tomorrow. They are Manoah's wife. Manoah, don't have any fear. If the Lord had not accepted your sacrifice, it would have been a different story. But look at this the different way. Look at this another way. She is there to give you insight. She's always available to make sure that you are stable. I pray for you this morning. That if you are here, you are a young man, you are not married yet, that God will give you a kind of a Manoah's wife for a woman. The kind, the kind, the kind of a woman who will keep you stable. Where the business is not going well, but she is there to keep you stable. When your job, they are ill-treating you at work, but she is there to keep you stable. Come on, somebody. Everything is going upside down, but she is there. To keep you sane, to keep you stable and show you the other side and give you discernment and give you insight and tell you no, 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 no. It's not yet the end. It looks hard, I agree. It looks tough, I agree. But remember what God said. Remember what God said. She is there to keep you stable in the midst of your challenges. There are some situations in our lives where we become so fearful. I mean, not because, we, not because we don't have faith. We do. But when our faith is challenged the most and we feel fearful. When the doctor tells you and the doctor diagnoses you with, the, with, the, with cancer, don't tell me you will not be fearful. Somewhere, somehow you will, you will feel that knock into your door of faith where you are thinking, you know what? I'm at the most fearful moment in my life. But if you have a Manoah's wife around you, she is there to keep you stable. Yes. Hallelujah. Keep me stable, Lord Jesus. Let's look again at another mother. Uh, Ruth chapter 3 verses 9. Ruth 3 verses 9. It reads as follows, who are you? This is Boaz asking. He asked, I am your servant Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. This is Ruth. Ruth's faithfulness, her faithfulness to her mother-in-law have given her access and grace for her to receive shelter. It was through Ruth's humility how she humbly recognizes herself. How she humbly recognizes recognize God's choice for herself. Are we together in this house? 
She was able to see beyond than just a daughter-in-law. But she was able to see the hand of God over the life of her mother-in-law. And through that discernment, she then saw that in this situation, this is God's choice for her. Mm. She was able to see that this is God's choice for me. This is God's choice for my children. She, her level of discernment was so deep. Are we together in this house? I pray for you this morning. That God will give you this kind of women in your life that will be able to see which is God's package for you. Which is God's package. You have so many choices in front of you, you don't know what to choose. But her level of discernment was able to see which is God's choice that God has for her. Yes, there are so many guys coming to you for proposing, proposing marriage. But your discernment is so sharp in such a way that you can tell which one is God's choice for you. For those that are still trusting God for marriage, I pray that God will give you the discernment of Ruth that you can tell, okay, there are five guys before me. There are ten guys before me. They are all looking good. They all have the right cologne. They are all smelling good. They are all having a right job. I can see potential here. But which is God's choice for me? Lord, give me that discernment. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That you will be able to make that distinction. That you will not make the right choice. But that you will be able to pick up your powers in the field. That this is God's choice for me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Do I have young ladies who are trusting God for marriage in this house? Do I have single ladies who are trusting God for their bosses in this house? Am I delivering the right parcel to the right ladies here? Or they are all sorted out? I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will be able to pick up. Pick up, pick up, pick up God's choice. Beyond the nice voice, beyond the nice words beyond the spoils beyond all the things that they are coming and they are giving you but you will be able to pick up God's choice for you and God's choice for your life and make the right decision in terms of marriage in the mighty name of Jesus if you are here you are a single lady you have not been proposed yet you have not been proposed yet you have not been approached yet you have not the favor has not come around you yet. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I'm removing the mask over your face and I'm releasing God's favor for marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know why this morning the Lord says I must do it. That you will be the right choice for the right man over your life in the name of Jesus. The correct Boaz who is looking for a good woman to marry in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God that you will be God's choice for your powers in Jesus mighty name if you are with me shout a big amen, amen. you will get married and you will marry right and you will marry and remain married in the name of Jesus you will not get married and find yourself going back home because things are not well. This morning in the name of Jesus, I'm coming against any anti-marriage spirit. Any anti-marriage spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any delayed marriage. Any delayed proposal. Any delayed approach. Any delayed pursuit of marriage over our single ladies in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you will be the next best candidate for marriage in the name of Jesus Christ I am unmasking you I'm removing the mask I'm releasing over you the blessing to get married in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I am removing over your life every form of disappointment any pain of the past any disappointment and abuse of the past in the issue of relationships marriage 
in the name of Jesus you will be the best choice you will be your Ruth for your powers you will get married and you will settle in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God if I were a young lady in this house I was going to receive this blessing now in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God receive your blessing to get married receive your blessing 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 to get married and marry right for the glory of God in Jesus name first summer 1 12 to 18 It reads as follows, and she kept on praying to the Lord, and Eli observed her mouth. Continue. This is Hannah we're talking about. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought that she was drunk. The last mother we're going to look at is Anna. Anna is the kind of a mother who knows how to decipher Instead, she gently corrected the priest, Eli. The priest was in error. She misjudged her, misunderstood her, and he quickly opened up his mouth without him figuring out of what actually was happening to her. She didn't cut deep the priest. She didn't just offend the priest. She didn't just speak out of turn with the priest. She knew how to speak with authority. She knew how to, how to decipher the situation and bring that what was needed at the time. She needed to bring correction. But the way she brought it, because she was speaking to somebody of authority, as much as she didn't compromise and firmly standing to that which is right, but she was able to gently bring a correction. Gently put things in place. Gently open up her mouth in order to bring that which was wrong and bringing it right. Are we together in this house? This is the kind of a mother who knows how to walk in wisdom. Who knows how to not quickly jump with emotions and quickly agree with her children when they are facing a challenging situation, dealing with different and difficult personalities and difficult people in her life. It might be in her job. It might be in her school. It might be with people that are in authority that her children are dealing with or that her children are handling. She is not quickly jumping into conclusion and quickly wanting to protect the child, but she knows that his child or her child, sorry, her child is supposed to go through this challenging situation so that character may be built on the inside of them. Now she has to decipher the situation, separate the issue of crisis and pull out wisdom and inject principle over her children. Are we together in this house? She does not move with emotions. She does not say, oh, Ella, you are speaking like this because you have sons. Because you know, you don't have the pain of not having children. You don't know what I'm going through. But she knew how to decipher the situation. Speaking the truth in love, but doing it so gently with wisdom. Hey! This kind of a, of a mother is a woman of wisdom. She knows how not to allow her emotions and for her not to overreact. Otherwise she will lose her position. Otherwise she will lose who she is. As tough as it is. But she is willing to mature and grow up in the midst of her pain. Are we together in this house? We need mothers like that in our churches. We need mothers like that in our communities. We need mothers like that in the kingdom of God who know how to speak with wisdom, who know not to compromise the truth, but as they bring in the truth, they're doing it so gently. 
They make sure they don't cut you, but they separate you from the lies that the enemy is telling you. Are we together in this house? They are not willing. They are not willing to lower the standard. But instead, they know how to gently handle the situation. Now, I pray for you this morning as I'm closing that God will give you this kind of wisdom as a mother. That God will give you this kind of temperaments. That you will not allow your emotions to go high and lose the price. That in the midst of the crises and in the midst of your most testing times, that you will be able to decipher the situation, separate issues, have discernment, knowing what to say, knowing how to build up your family, knowing how to build up your children, knowing how to speak in wisdom, knowing how to inject the principles that are needed. Even when you are tested the most, even when people are unfair to you, even when you have been accused and you know you are innocent but you will not allow emotions to go high but instead you will decipher and navigate the challenge and separate matters and still come out victorious put your hands together and say Lord make me this kind of a mother make me this kind of a woman make me this kind of a mother in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God put your hands together and celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ oh my God my time celebrate the Lord celebrate the Lord celebrate the Lord celebrate the Lord that after today's message you will be a woman who is like Manoah's wife you will also be a woman who is like a Deborah you will also be a woman who is like Anna you will also be a woman who brings stability in the home, who knows how to calm situations. Let me give you a bit of some wisdom. Come up, worshipers. Do you know that when you are handling a man, let me give you some wisdom. Are you allowing me? Do you know that men don't, li don't like conflict? They run away from conflict. Every time there's a conflict they run away they don't want to address things are we talking in this house the mother is back you will forgive me when there is a crisis especially when they are on the wrong they don't want matters addressed <laughs> are we together in this house because a man's heart is like that of a bird. Are we together? Any noise that comes nearer, the bird has ran out. They fly away. Are we together in this house? Are you getting something out of this? So it takes a woman of such gentle heart and gentle spirit a woman of wisdom who knows how to keep the situation calm. It means that as a woman, somewhere, somehow, there is a level of maturity that is required of me and you. Where as emotional beings as we are, because with us, when we are happy and we are excited, you will know. When we are upset and we are disappointed and we are hurt, you will know. Are we together in this house? When we are excited, you will what? The whole house will tell. Everything will be blooming in the house. Because the woman is excited. Same as when we are hurt. Especially when we are hurt by those we love. We never stop to talk about it. We will remind you, baby. We will remind you real good. And we'll bring all the details. Of when and how everything started and what happened and this. And even the extras, the ones you didn't ask for, we will give it to you. <laughs> are we together in this house? So as emotional beings as we are, but it takes a woman of such a gentle spirit and heart. 
that knows how to decipher the situation and bring in the truth in such a way that the king is willing to receive it. Especially when he is wrong the most. That is where your gentleness is tested the most. And at that time you feel like saying, I can't pretend as if Are we together in this house? I can't pretend because I'm not a good pretend. I'm not a hypocrite. I don't want to say things I don't feel. That's us. Are we together? But let me tell you, daughters of the, of the, of the kingdom, at times you have to pretend. At times, you have to act happy. Even when you are not happy. Because you are stabilizing the boat. Remember, you are the thermometer. The highs and the lows, you are the dictator of how far the temperature and the atmosphere of the home is going to be like. When you see that we are already in the midst of trouble, you just decide, I'm on fire, but I decide this fire is ice. It's not burning me. I'm not hurt. I'm fine. Because you are coming what? The boat. Are we together in this house? You want to be Manoah's wife. Hey? You can see that we are about to die. You don't scream at that moment and say, hey, we are, we, oh my God, we are dying. We are, the, the whole house. It's your decision. We, no, no, no. You just decide, no, we are not dying today. And yet you can see that the truck has lost its brakes. It's on its way to the, to the cliff. You are right there inside with the children and everything. And you decide, we are not dying, baby. We are not dying. We are fine. We are okay. We are sailing real good. <laughs> because you are calming the situation. Why? Because your time will come to express it. When everything is vibrating, it's not the best time for you to say and give the details of the crisis and remind the king that everything is falling apart. He is already seeing that it's falling apart and he is responsible. The issue is when you add now, he will be finished. Am I wrong, Minister Harbour? So give this man, give this man a moment so that he can breathe and think correctly. Your time to express it and say it as you feel it will come. But it might not be now. For now, we are facing the cliff. We are inside the truck and the brakes are gone. So that he can think right as to how we save the truck end the family's life and avoid the cliff then after everything has been salvaged only then you come and say my king live long <laughs> you are the wisest man I've ever seen and at that time, you know, hey, this decision now. But you speak the opposite because you are Manoah's wife and you are a Hannah. You know that the authority is at fault, but you decide you are the wisest man I've ever seen. I don't know how You've managed the situation, but the way you did it. Are we together, 21st century church? 
Are we together, 21st century ladies? Then you lay down your heart. Then the king can hear you and the king may correct it. Now, if you have done it right, that crisis in your family might be the last time you see it. If you have not done it right, you might see it for the next 10 to 20 times. But thank God that this morning, the anointing and the grace is falling on you. The grace and the anointing of wisdom, of discernment, of knowing how to navigate the situation and stabilize things and keep things calm and collected and stable. Building up families and the homes and the lives of those that you are entrusted on you is coming upon you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's put our hands together and celebrate Jesus.